Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. In today's video, I am going to show you how I take my Korean note. During the past few months of studying Korean by myself, I have tried out different techniques and formats and I have finally found the way that works best for me. So I am going to share with you some of the tips that have helped me take efficient note while keeping them neat. I hope these tips can be helpful if you also self-studying Korean and working on improving your note-taking style. Let's start with the first tip. This tip isn't directly related to taking note, but it is to use a separate notebook for each resource that you're studying from. Doing this will make your notes a lot more organized so that you don't get mixed up among different resources, especially when you're studying with a lot of books at the same time. I have a notebook for all lessons from Talk to Me in Korean, a notebook for Suin Carrot, one for vocabulary, another one for lessons from Lingo Dear app, and another one for practice problems. For me, I prefer keeping a separate notebook for practice problems especially since things can get messy when I make notes on my mistakes. If you don't use books and prefer printing out lessons instead, you can also keep them separated by organizing them in different binders or folders. While we're on the topic of notebooks, I'm going to show you the notebooks I use for taking Korean note. All the products will be linked in the description below for your convenience. My most favorite notebook and also the one that you see all the time in my videos as well as on my Instagram is this A5 grid notebook. Personally, I love grid papers since I think it's a major support to make my handwriting look neat. And I choose the A5 size instead of a traditional leather sized notebook is because I just want something different and fun for my Korean learning experience. And A5 is the perfect size for me to carry around when I want to. I also use these B5 Kokuyo Campus notebooks. They have a dark grid with lines layout and they're really cute and colorful. Please keep in mind that these notebooks are my personal favorite. You don't have to use the exact ones. The point is to use whatever notebooks you have that you feel the most comfortable with. Either line, dotted, or grid, A4 or A5, spiral or bound, it's all up to you. My note taking process starts with skimming through the entire lesson for the first time. I usually do this while listening to the podcast to get an overview of what I'm going to learn so that I'm a bit more prepared. For longer and more complicated lessons, I like to write down keywords and main points on a notepad or a post-it note to help planning and organizing my note more efficiently. This will also act as a checklist for later when I finish taking note to make sure I've included all the topics that need to be covered. In this video, I use Talk to Me in Korean as an example, but my process is the same for all of the other resources that I use. And now the actual note taking begins. Since I already skimmed through the lessons while listening to the podcast, when I start taking note, I'm essentially reading the lesson for the second time, but this time more thoroughly. I start with writing the title of the lesson with this big tip pen. You can use whatever pen you have, but the point is to make your title stand out so it's easier later on to find what you're looking for. I also prefer starting a new lesson on a fresh new page of the notebook. My go-to pen for note taking is the Zebra Sarasa 0.5 black gel pen. The ink writes very smoothly and the 0.5 tip is the perfect size for my handwriting. For my note, I like to have different sections for grammar and vocabulary because it just makes more sense and they look more organized this way. I start with writing the main grammar point in the middle and right below it, I explain when, how, and what it's used for in bullet points. 
The explanations in the book are usually written in paragraphs, which can be hard to read, so by making bullet points in your notes, you're essentially making a summary of what you read. Your explanations can be written in any language that you're comfortable with. They also don't have to be complete sentences or in correct grammar. As long as it is beneficial for your own understanding and learning, then that's all that matters. Also, I usually don't write down everything that's given in the book. I only take note of the important points so that when I need to review, I know exactly where to look. Right below the explanation, I write down a few sample sentences to better understand how the grammar is being used. In my opinion, making example is very important in language learning because you can learn more efficiently how a grammar or a new word is being used in a context instead of just memorizing them individually. Another tip I want to share is that when you take notes, don't simply just write things down unconsciously but focus on learning new information. I find reading out loud what I'm writing down is helpful in understanding and memorizing. Also, take as much time as you need to take note because this is what you will refer to later on instead of reading the textbook all over again. Once I finish taking note, I return to the post-it note I made earlier to check if my notes have covered all the important concepts. And while I'm going back through my note, I like to use a highlighter to highlight the main grammar points to make it look more appealing. I also sometimes use color pens for new vocabularies. And I prefer to use the same color throughout the lesson so that it doesn't get too colorful and distracted. So let's say if I use a blue highlighter, I will also use a blue color pen. Here are some of my favorite color pens and highlighters that I use a lot in my note. Sometimes when I see an awkward blank space in my note, I like to add a little cute sticker to make the note look more fun to study with. This is obviously not a necessary step and I don't do it all the time, but if it makes your learning experience more fun, then I say go for it. Another step I recommend in your note-taking process is to do practice problems immediately after learning a new lesson. This way, you not only strengthen the knowledge that you just learned, but also have the chance to add any extra information from the workbook that might not have been mentioned in the textbook. There are usually not any new information from the practice problems, but sometimes there are some good examples that you may want to write down. There are many reasons why I dedicate a lot of my time in taking neat and efficient note. When taking note, I pay more attention to details and learn information more effectively than by just reading or listening. It helps me sort out the information I need to know and keeps my mind involved with what I read from the textbook and what I listen from the podcast. Taking note is technically another term for making your own study resource which is written in the way that you understand the best. And also, that's the very thing that you always refer back to whenever you need. For me, for example, if I forget a grammar point that I learned in the past, I will open my notebook to that specific lesson and read through it to review instead of going through pages after pages in the textbook. So that is it for this video on my note-taking process. I hope some of these tips can be useful for you as they have helped me through the past few months of self-studying Korean. Please always keep in mind that there is no right or wrong way to take note and that you should not try to copy the exact note-taking technique but find your own process that you are most comfortable with and works best for you. If you have any tips for note-taking that you find useful, please feel free to share with everyone in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and for your continuous support. I will see you soon with another video. Bye!